2001 through 2007 Chevy 2500 and 3500 HD pickups with the 8.1 liter big block engine, water pump, and thermostat replacement. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive, and I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of replacing the water pump and thermostat. The first step we need to do is get a bucket and slide it under the vehicle to catch the coolant. Take off the radiator cap, and you're going to crawl under on the driver's side. And on the lower left hand corner of the radiator is a petcock. So these little wires are in the way, so you might have to push it out of the way. You're going to uh, loosen this petcock up, turn it out a few threads, and just enough until the coolant starts draining out. You don't want to take it all the way out. Just, just loosen it up enough where the coolant starts to drain. While the coolant's draining, we're going to go ahead and take off the snorkel by loosening up the clamp here and here, and then pull this portion off and set aside. Next, I'm going to disconnect a negative battery cable here. The reason why there's a module here that we need to unplug so we're going to disconnect the battery, that way we don't have any spikes or anything. So use an 8 millimeter wrench and loosen up the battery cable and take that off. Alright, so we need to take the hose clamp here and pull it back and pull the hose off. And then we need to take the three bolts holding the thermostat housing on off. So now that i got the hose off the radiator neck there, I'm going to take it off the thermostat. I'm using my Milwaukee 3H drive impact wrench here to make quick work of that. So the power steering reservoir is going to be connected to the thermostat with a bracket here that has a 10 millimeter nut. Remove that nut and then you can lift or uh, pry this little bracket upwards a little bit and then pu push it off to the side. And if you're having trouble getting it off, you can loosen up the clamp on the bottom of the, uh, of the neck here and then slide the pipe upwards a little bit to get it off the neck. I didn't have to do that, but you may have to do that. So once you get it pulled off, just kind of Torque it over to the side like this and remove the nut or bolt underneath. Now you can lift the top half of the housing and thermostat out like this and the hose and set it aside for now. Now just underneath the radiator neck we need to unplug this, the two electrical connectors that go to the control module here. To do that I just, I just used my fingers and pushed it off. The bottom one I had to use a screwdriver to kind of push on the tab right here and then pull the, uh, the connector off. Now we're ready to unbolt it by removing the two bolts here at the top. Then you can lift the module out and set aside. So you'll pull it straight up. Now we need to remove the clip here at the bottom of the fan shroud. And we'll pull our wiring harness out of the way like this. And then we need to get to the second clip over here and remove that. They have pliers that are designed to pull these clips out. Uh, if you don't have them, you can use side cutters. But you want to grab the clip at the end and pull it and pull it off. So once you get that clip off, you're going to take the one off in the corner here. After you get those two uh, disconnected, then you're going to go over onto the passenger side. And right down below, there's uh, two more clips here and here that you're going to remove. The two clips in the corners, I use side cutters like this to help get that little tab upwards. Once you get all the clips removed, on the passenger side here, there's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove on the fan shroud. Now you can lift the fan shroud out and set aside for now. Now we're ready to unbolt the fan itself. To do that, we're going to need a couple special tools. So there's a 36 millimeter uh, wrench and then this little tool that's designed to hook onto the water pump and hold it into place. So I will link these all up in the description of the video. So the way it works is you hook it around the, the bolts like this and then you're going to put the uh, 36 millimeter wrench and you're going to pull the wrench counter counterclockwise and the uh, tool clockwise. So I'll demonstrate that for you. I got the, uh, the tool ho hooked onto the uh, bolts right here holding the, uh, the water pump into place. And now I'm putting the wrench. And now you pry the two away from each other like that. And that'll loosen up the fan from the water pump. Then you can just go ahead and spin it off by hand. When you're spinning this off, you want to be careful that it doesn't come all the way off and fall into the radiator. So take your time when taking it off at the last couple threads. Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and close that petcock that was draining the coolant out. So go ahead and close that off. With the fan shout out, you can reach it now from the top right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that off. After that, we're going to remove the dry belt. You're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench or ratchet uh, to uh, remove it. So you put it on the tension right here and you torque it over to the right. These ratchet wrenches that I'm using here are about 18 inches long and they work great for that. I'll, I'll link them up in the description of the video. I'm also going to change this AC belt out while I'm doing this job. So I'm going to take that off. I'm using a 3H 
ratchet with a short extension so you'll just put the 3 8 head into the tensioner like this and torque it over to the right also and take the belt off. Now we need to remove the pulley from the water pump so I'm using a 10 millimeter socket and a cordless ratchet here to remove the bolts. This ratchet is made in Milwaukee. It's uh, brand new. They just came out this in the last couple of months. I'll link this up in the description of the video. I don't know how I've lived life without these ratchets uh, over the years. These really make jobs like this easy. So once you get the pulley unbolted, you can set the pulley aside. Next, we're going to remove the lower radiator hose from the uh, water pump here. So pull the hose clamp back and pull the hose off and just tuck it off to the side out of your way. Now we need to remove the belt tensioner. There's a bolt here and a bolt here that we need to remove and then set it aside. To make quick work of that, I'm using my Milwaukee 3H drive impact wrench here. Now that that's removed, the next step is to take off this elbow hose here. So I'm going to pull the hose clamp back. And once I get the hose clamp back, I use a pick tool like this and I put it in the, in the hose here and kind of uh, run it around the hose and that helps break the hose free. It likes to get stuck on these pipes. I'm not going to take this hose all the way off. I'm just going to take off this end here. So I'm just going to loosen it up here and I'll show you how I get it off completely. So I'm going to take off the two bolts on the right side of the pump and then there's two bolts on the left side of the pump that I'm going to remove. To make quick work of that, I'm going to use my impact wrench here again. There's plenty of room to get these, these type of tools down here, so I recommend you use them if you got them. And uh, go ahead and take out all four of those bolts. The bottom bolt here is longer than the top bolt, so you want to keep track of that. So now you can pull the water pump off like this, and then you can pull the water pump to the left, and that'll slide the hose off the neck right here. And now you can lift the water pump out of the vehicle. Now you can clean the mating surface on the right and the left here and peel off any of the old gaskets like this. To clean that surface up, you can use razor blades, scrapers, or a roll-off disc like this and get in there and buff that off clean. Once you get those all cleaned up, the next thing I like to do is take compressed air and blow out any of the coolant that's in the threads where the bolts go. It's not good to put the new bolts back in and tighten them up with the water in there. It could cause a hydraulic effect and, and do damage. So we're going to be installing a factory thermostat here and a factory water pump. These are the part numbers. I will link up all this in the description of the video. To prep the water pump for reinstallation, we need to take the gaskets here and we need to, uh, what we do is we slide the bolts through the water pump like this and then we take the gaskets and slide it over the bolts like this and that'll hold the uh, gaskets in place. We're going to do that for both left and right side of the pump. So the driver's side of the pump has uh, the two short bolts. And then the passenger side over here has the longer bolt. The longer bolt went on the bottom and the shorter one on the top here. So we'll go ahead and insert those bolts through and then go ahead and put the gasket on like this. Now as a precaution, I like to take a blue thread locker made by Permatex and put a little dab on the threads. And that will help prevent these bolts from loosening up and backing off and causing a coolant leak. So I'm going to replace the, the elbow hose here. I'll link this up in the description. I'm also going to replace the uh, clamps. So I matched up the uh, new elbow with the old elbow and installed it the exact same way and then slid the hose clamps on. And then I'm going to put a little bit of lube here on the end of the uh, hose here. You can use Vaseline. It works really well. So you want to lube up the, the hose. That way when you go to slide it on the pipe here, you'll lower this water pump down into position and slide it onto the pipe and that'll slide on nice and easy. And then you can take the, uh, the water pump and slide it into position and start the four bolts. Once you get the four bolts on, you can run them up until they're snug. So I'm just using the impact wrench here to run the, the uh, water pump bolts in until they're snug or just barely touching. And then we're going to torque it down with a torque wrench. Now with a torque wrench, you can torque all four of the bolts down to 37 foot-pounds. Now you can go ahead and position the hose clamps and tighten up the two clamps. Now you can install the lower radiator hose and clamp. Now we're ready to reinstall the belt tensioner. I have a little bit of that blue thread locker on the bolts here too. I will be sure to link it up in the description of the video. That way if you need to pick it up, you can find it there. So now you can take the, the tensioner here and, and put it back into position and then tighten the two bolts up. I just ran it down until they're snug. And then once they're snug, you can torque these down to 37 foot pounds. Also, I had to use a little extension to get, get on there with the torque wrench. So tight, tighten those down to 37 foot-pounds. Now we're ready to bolt the pulley back up to the water pump. I also put a little bit of that blue thread locker on the bolts here that prevents these from vibrating loose and back off. So go ahead and install the, the uh, pulley 
and I'm using my ratchet here to run them down until they're snug. I tried looking up the torque spec, but I could not find it for this. So I'm just gonna run these down till they're snug, all four of them. Then I'm gonna use my fan clutch tool here to hold the uh, hold it in place. So I'll hold, hook it like this and hold it, and then I'll use a, uh, a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench here. These are those wrenches that I showed you earlier that are made by Mountain. They're about 18 inches long, so you can put a lot of, quite a bit of torque on these. So I went ahead and, and did it in a crisscross pattern. So I, I hooked the tool on the end and held it in place while I tightened the bolt down. Then I did, and then I just kept rotating it around until all four of these bolts are tight. So now that I got the pulley on in tight, I noticed that the hose clamp is making contact with the pulley. So I'm gonna reposition the uh, hose clamp here. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall new belts. I'm gonna put the AC belt on first. I will link up all the belts and stuff in the description of the video. So you're gonna slip it on over the crank, then over the AC compressor, and then you're gonna to torque the uh, torque the tensioner to out of your way, and then you can slip it on over the tensioner last. Now we're ready to install the main belt. And if you look right here on the cowling, there's a sticker showing you the diagram of uh, the most common uh, engines. Find the one that suits your engine and then route the belt the way it goes. So I went around the crank pulley, around the water pump, and the power steering pump, over the alternator, and then over the tensioner over here on the left. And the last portion is I'll, I'll, I'll torque the tensioner over clockwise, and then I'll slip the belt on underneath the idler pulley. So I'll torque the uh, torque it over, and then I'll slip the belt on over here on pulley last, and then I'll just double check that the belt is in all the grooves. And once I'm satisfied that that's in good working order, I'm going to take the fan and uh, screw it back onto the end of the water pump. So you'll position it on there and screw it on clockwise until it bottoms out. So I'll take my fan clutch tool here and I'll slip it around the bolts here. And then I'll, I'll use the 36 millimeter uh, wrench and I'll, I'll squeeze them till they go together and tighten it up. Now we're ready to take the fan shroud and slide it back down into position. So once you get it lower down into position, you want to make sure that the uh, top half is lined up with the bottom half. Then you can install the clips, so you'll push them through the holes and push the little tabs in until they lock into place, all four of them. Once you get all four of the clips reinstalled, the next step is we're going to install the two bolts on the passenger side here of the fan shroud. Now we're going to reinstall the module. So they have these little hooks on the end. They have to hook in the bottom of the fan shroud there. So you'll slide the module down into position. After that, you can start the two 10 millimeter bolts of one here and here. Then you can go ahead and tighten all the bolts down on the fan truck. Now we can plug the module back in. I plug the bottom one in first, so you just line it up and push it on until you hear it kind of click into place. Now you can take the top one and make sure it's routed in there right and push it in until it clicks into place. Now you can take your new thermostat and gasket and place it into the housing right here. Now you can take the upper half and place it on there and start the three bolts. So I use the 3 h impact wrench here to run it down until they're snug. I'm not torquing them down with this, I'm just running them down until they're snug. After that, we'll torque them with a torque wrench. Now you can torque all three of them down to 22 foot-pounds. Now you can position the power string reservoir hose here back on and tighten the bolt up. Put the uh, radiator on the neck and put the clamp back on. Then you can take the air snorkel and slide that back over the throttle body on to the air cleaner and tighten that up. Then you'll install the battery cable and tighten that up. Now we're ready to fill it up with coolant. So you'll fill the coolant reservoir up to the full line on the bottle here with 5050 appro uh, GM approved Dex Cool. Start the engine and run it for about 10 to 15 minutes. You're gonna run it until the thermostat here opens up. You'll fill this upper hose and when that thermostat opens up, it'll get hot. Then what you'll do is you'll double check the coolant level in the uh, reservoir bottle here and you may have to top it back off. It may drop down once that thermostat opens up. And that'll complete the job of replacing the water pump and thermostat on a Chevy with the 8.1 liter V8. I will link up all the parts and tools in the description of the video. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this, and I'd like to thank you again for watching.